Okay, so let's talk about linkage and mapping. So there's, I guess, some terms that we probably need to define, but let's just make a quick note about one thing first. Before we can even divulge into the map distances, before we can divulge into anything, we need to do a chi, chi square test um, that the genes assort independently because you have to prove that it's not a, a, a sorting independently before you can prove that it's anything different from that or to pr pr prove that they're linked um, so what we do is we assuming that they're not linked the thing that I thought was interesting is that when you're doing this so that there's two classes that you can get you can have recombinant and you can have parental two classes right so your degrees of freedom is one. N minus one, N minus two is only gonna be one. So with that being said, it's pretty, this is gonna give us highly, uh, I guess, pretty cut and dry, straightforward uh, chi-square test. So the next thing you wanna do, assuming that they don't assort independently, you're gonna try to determine if they're linked. So you're gonna do your crosses and I'll do a video on how to do that from a set of data. But first thing we need to do is calculate map distance. How do we calculate map distance? Well, uh, well, this is, I guess I should probably clarify that this is map distance only with two genes. You can't calculate map distance accurately if you're not putting this into groups of two. But what you do is you take the total number of recombinants for just for those two genes and then you divide that by, so I'm going to say the number of recombinants in the progeny and you divide that by the total number of offspring and that'll usually give you a number, your answer there, and you're gonna go ahead and multiply that by 100%, and that is going to give us our units, or, or I guess our answer will be usually in map units, or I like to say the word centimorgans because Thomas Hunt Morgan busted his ass to give us this information. Let's at least do him the honor of the name. Okay, so the other thing that you need to know is something called interference. Inter Interference, and I probably spelt that wrong. I think there's an A in there. Anyways, so interference is defined as one minus the coefficient of coincidence. I'll explain what that is later. And what this does is the, the, the problem with the reason that we have to do this though is because of double crossovers, map distance is underestimated. So map distance is underestimated because of these double crossovers. So I'm say because of double crossovers. And so we have to determine how much of this, with this equation, how much double crossovers are interfering with our predictions. So there's two answers that we can get. We can get positive interference and we can get negative interference. And so it's kind of like the inverse of what you're probably thinking whenever you, you see these sets. So if we have negative interference, that means that a crossover in one region, crossover, I'm going to say in region A, actually increases, and I'll switch colors to, to drive home that point, increases crossover, say in region B. It increases it. So if you get negative interference, and I can't stress this enough, if you do this and you get a negative value for interference, always, always, always double check your answer because this is really, really rare. Okay, so positive interference means just the exact opposite. A positive interference would be where uh, crossover in region A decreases crossover in region B. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that out in green. And that's the norm, decreases. Running out of room here. Last thing that I feel like needs to be addressed is the coefficient of Coincidence, and my handwriting is bad, so I apologize, but coefficient of coincidence. So there's, I guess, a set of information of what this is. So I'm just gonna say big C, right, is equal to the 
observed double crossovers divided by your expected. Expected double crossovers. I hope you're not seeing a trend here of everything being divided by the expected, but what this is this is what we use. So remember that in our equation, and I'll just write this up at the top, of interference, before we can figure out what interference is, we need to figure out what the coefficient of coincidence is. So co interference is equal to one minus C. How do we get C? Well, this is how we get C. So observe, you can get that from your experimental data, but how do we get, well, how do we figure out what our expected double crossovers are? So to, to do this, we do the product rule. Remember, the product rule says that we multiply the two probabilities together because if we're usually given it in a specific order, is this a, does this pertain to order? Yes, this pertains to the order. So you're going to multiply the individual probabilities. So let's just say a hypothetical situation where you have genes A, you have genes B, and you have genes C. And uh, let's say that each of these are, you know, I don't, I'll, I'll just go ahead and write that there's a map units here, and you're probably gonna have map units here. So what you do is you take your genes for green, you take this right here, this map unit here, map unit here, you divide that by 100 to go ahead and correlate it back there, and you get your answer. You're gonna take this one here as well, and you're going to divide those map units by 100, and you're gonna get an answer from that. Answer there. So what we do is, I'm just going to write this down here, you take our answer from this and you're going to multiply that by your answer from that. And when you multiply these two together, this is going to give you the, I'll do blue, this gives us the probability or the likelihood of double crossovers. So that's the likelihood of double crossovers, but we want to know the expected double crossovers. So all that you have to do to, to figure out the expected double crossovers is you take this, so I'm just going to say P of double crossovers, and you're going to multiply that by, again, we're using the, the product rule here, the total number of offspring. And so what this gives us, and I'm just going to write this in big arrow here. What this gives us is, and I will do it, ah, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with it in white, the expected number of double crossovers, aka what we were looking for at the beginning. That's a big arrow. Arrow big arrow. So that is your expected likelihood of double crossovers. Expected will usually be uh, larger than observed. If it's not, double check. Always double check if you get values that are unusual because if it's larger than observed then we're going to get a very, I'm sorry, if it's smaller than observed then we're going to get a very large coefficient of coincidence.